The internet computer is intended as an extension of the public internet. And today the public internet is a decentralized network that connects everyone and everything. The internet computer extends that public internet so that it's also the platform on which we can build. So the purpose is to enable people to migrate away from traditional IT, things like cloud services, databases, web servers, all that stuff, and build anew on the public internet itself. And when you do that, you can build with a new advanced form of smart contracts and that, for example, are tamper-proof. So you don't need a file and you can't be hacked. And of course, if you're into Web3, you can do things like tokenization. A vision that encompasses not just the internet computer, which is kind of crypto cloud, but also other blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Back in 2009, January 2009, we got the first blockchain Bitcoin that gave us digital gold. Six years later, we had 2015, we had Ethereum, and that gave us the first software and data on a blockchain. Another six years on, and we got the internet computer, which kind of provided this crypto cloud functionality. And one of the key aspects of the internet computer is that the code that it hosts is natively multi-chain. And that means that you can create a sort of larger world computer that incorporates these other blockchains too. So for example, the internet computer recently integrated with a Bitcoin network, internet computer nodes talk to Bitcoin nodes and code on the internet computer can create Bitcoin addresses, hold Bitcoin, send Bitcoin, and you can create Bitcoin DeFi for example. And surely there's a similar kind of integration will appear with, with, with Ethereum and this will enable code on the internet computer to call into code on Ethereum and, and vice versa, giving, for example, the Ethereum ecosystem access to this crypto cloud functionality. And this is achieved with a network level integration. There's no bridge or anything like that. It's just using trustless cryptography. I think it's going pretty well. Today, the internet computer by transaction volume is the largest, most highest used blockchain in the world. I think currently it's doing about 250,000 Ethereum equivalent transactions a second. It's processed about 2 billion blocks. And, you know, uh, there's some really amazing projects that are running from the internet computer. So one of the confusions we often see is that, you know, when, when people hear that some Web3 project is built on, you know, Solana or Aptos or Series A or something like that, that Web3 service actually runs from those blockchains. What's happening in those architectures generally is the service is built on Amazon Web Services and the service of Amazon Web Services is just keeping, maintaining a token or an NFT or something on the blockchain. When someone says built on the internet computer, it really means built on the internet computer. So there's several uh, very successful, you know, web free social media services running for the internet computer. And oftentimes they're fully tokenized. For example, there's something that's um, fully decentralizing with a DAO soon, it's called Hot or Not. It's a kind of tokenized TikTok that runs from the internet computer. And it's called Hot or Not because you can bet hot tokens on whether a video is gonna go viral or not. And it's, you know, a very clever thing because the people who are creating viral videos are also getting these hot tokens. And you, you can also get rewarded for participating in tasks like content moderation. And that's the real future of Web3. Web3 services that run 100% on crypto, that fully tokenize and provide, you know, control to their community through DAOs, special DAOs that actually update the software. So you've got a kind of end-to-end -end decentralization. There's no traditional tech involved whatsoever. And what you're doing is you're sort of founderizing your community by giving them governance tokens, and you're making your users part of this kind of vast industrious virtual workforce by having them produce content, help with content moderation, refer other users and things like that. Well, I mean, there's, there's lots of answers, right? So, I mean, first of all, if you look at the um, arc of tech history, um, it, it, you know, it's curving towards open systems. You know, I've been around for a bit back in the mid nineties. There was a real debate about, you know, whether it would be the internet or this idea of the information superhighway proposed by Microsoft or Oracle. And before that, we had America Online. And, you know, Microsoft and Oracle said, look, you know, it's going to be safer than the internet. And we're going to protect everyone, put them in a walled garden. And we understand what people want. So we're going to give them creative content. Nobody wanted to be in that walled garden. And the internet flourished and expanded because it was decentralized. It was permissionless, so it, was a, it functioned as a free market, credit was innovation, economic growth, and, and, and provided social freedoms. Internet computer, world computer is on that same trajectory, you know, versus traditional tech. But it's not just about uh, having the world build on the open internet, the public internet. It's also about the technology that makes that possible, because when you build using this kind of advanced smart contract code, it's called canister smart contracts. Well, guess what? You don't need files. The world just spends, last year I spent 172 billion, 172 billion dollars on security, right? IT security. So imagine the advantages of being able to get rid of firewalls and scene logging and security tips. In addition to that, overall, the world spent $5 trillion 
on, on IT. And if you if you break that down, 80% of that is IT operations, it's humans. And that results from the complexity of traditional IT. When you build with Canvas to small contracts, you massively simplify R&D and, and, and maintenance so you can start addressing this colossal cost. And of course, if you're talking about Web3, the big revolution is you can take, you can create mass market internet services that are owned by their users and communities and where you founderize millions of users who then start creating, for example, viral content, helping with content moderation, referring other users. And this delivers on the fundamental promise of Web3, providing ownership to users as well as things like transparency.